the big ragu, three Vincenzo, Dante's Inferno, whatever you want to call him, Al. He's been red hot all year, man. Dante's been yeah. Just don't call. Just don't call him. Wait for dinner, CP. This guy is still torching the net, probably. Yeah. Or you know, the lights are still out. He's going. But what a performance, man! You know what's funny? This is what's funny, CP. I have never seen Evan Fournier play such a great (laughs) defense. And shout out to Swinney for saying this because I was thinking as soon as I was watching. Spirited defense. This guy is going out there for for like for for, for any. He's even the most ever. I've ever seen him on that side of the court to prevent Dante from breaking his record. How sad is that? He was trying How to give my man sad, no airspace. No airspace. I didn't know, like, like was was Fournier, was was he, you know, up for the challenge against Ragu, or was he trying to prove that he wasn't as bad as Bogdanovich? I think it was a double-headed uh, motivation there for, for Fournier tonight, man. Dude, wait, where was that, man? Where was that defense when you were on the Knicks? Where was yeah. that? You probably could have gotten more minutes. He's talking like, oh, you know, I'm not getting playing time, this, that, and the third. Hey, man, if you played like that, maybe, just maybe, you would have been on the court. But, hey, the record goes to a guy who is much worthy of it, who knows how to play defense, offense, consistent three-point shooting. Shout-out to Dante for DiVincenzo, man, for, you know, breaking the single-game record for the New York Knicks. You saw that Tibbs didn't want him to get hurt, so he's like, instead of going for the, which uh, was it, this season, which is 14 made threes, yeah. Pulled him out. He was like, that's it, man. Yeah. You're done for the night. Then you get Jericho Sims and the rest of the crew to go in there and finish up what was a bum night. Oh, true. It was truly, truly a bum night, man. And, you know, one of those nights, uh, you know, Tim said, uh, Perks, uh, take the night off. We don't need you tonight. It was just one of those situations. I mean, the, the Pistons are just a complete mess. We talked about it on the NBA report. The most disappointing team in the NBA by far. Uh, the team is a joke. The coach is a joke. And the Knicks just handle business and take me quick work out of them. But, but that's what good teams do. You don't play with your food. You, you go in there and take care of business. And that's what they did. The previous record was set by one Evan Fournier on uh, January 6, 2022, against the Boston Celtics at 10. And he tied the record that was set by J.R. Smith, who uh, did it against Miami Heat. On April 6, 2014, he had 10. Before that, it was DiVincenzo this year, January 30th, Knicks versus Jazz with nine. And Jalen Brunson on the Brunson 50-piece heater against the Phoenix Suns. He had nine threes. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, look at that. But, hey, Dante did the thing tonight, man. 40 points for Dante DiVincenzo. 40 points for the big ragu, How man. How massive is that? Yeah. I mean, look, it's against the Detroit Pistons. They didn't have yeah. Kay Cunningham. This team was just in shambles. I mean, you watched Jaden Ivey out there tonight. Couldn't even get really anything going. He was the sole guy tonight, CP, yeah. at the guard position. You thought, hey, maybe this guy could show why he was – Drafted so highly last year, right? And rated so highly. But tonight, man, Nick's defense just kept him in check. Wasn't able to score. Wasn't able to help his team really get organized. And the Pistons looked like the Washington Generals out there. They could not do anything in order to keep up with the New York Knicks tonight. So the New York Knicks just made quick and light work of the Pistons. Light work. And here he was after the game with MSG Network's Rebecca Harlow on his 40-point 11 threes master class tonight. Here he is. Thanks, Mike. Dante, what a night. Your first 40-point game. You set a new record for threes made in a game here with this Knicks franchise. I mean, how did that feel for you? It's fun. I mean, doing it in front of the best fans in the world. It doesn't get any better than this. You're getting lots of love for sure, too. And one of the things that was so special about it was watching the way that your teammates were feeding you tonight. How would you describe the unselfishness? Clearly, they wanted to see you get this record, too. Um, I mean, if Jalen passed the ball more, I could have had probably 15 of them tonight. But, nah, everybody was unselfish. Everybody was playing for one another, and it was a fun game to be a part of. You said that these records mean something to you because you love New York. You want to settle down and play here for a long time. What is it that you love about this organization? It's the best fans in the world, and this is home for me. Thanks, Dad. Appreciate it. All right, that was three Vincenzo in front of the Garden crowd, man. Get, getting his love. It was his time. Three Vincenzo's time, man. And, and you know, I, I talked about this on, on previous shows on Knicks Weekly in the past when talking about – uh, this Nova Nick trio and why they've been uh, such a force for this team. And I I just have to go back to 
the experience that all of these guys have accumulated before coming here to the Knicks, mm-hmm. right? They've already, they already came into the league with high floor. They come from that Nova program, won championships on the J. Wright, NBA-ready players. All the Villanova guys always have that high floor. But these guys now have, been, have traveled. They've been battle-tested with DiVincenzo. Even though he didn't play in the finals with Milwaukee, he went through it with those guys. He practiced with those guys. He, he ran through it with the championship team, ran through it, went through it with the championship uh, uh, dynasty in the Warriors. Right, and he talked about how much he, his work ethic improved, learning from Steph and from Clay, and how they approach shooting, how they went into practice shooting their three pointers. Like all of those, you know, those tips and the skills that you learn along the way, all help to contribute to make you a better pro as your season progresses. And I think that's what we're seeing here with with Divincenzo, man. Absolutely, and look, you know, we had James Ham on the show and. Dante thought that he was going to get a, a contract from the Sacramento Kings. That obviously didn't happen. Yeah. He becomes, you know, he goes and is able to test free agency, goes to the wars. And then from there, you know, sometimes you go on the, your, your journey is so murky at times, right? Where it seems like it's going to be prosperous. He wins, as you mentioned, a championship in Milwaukee, takes a downturn in Sacramento, right? And then next thing you know, he starts to build his career in Golden State, being able to learn how to play in that free-flowing offense, and now he's able to contribute that here as well, CP. It's not only the shooting, it's everything else that he brings as well, right? The ability to jump passing lanes, to get steals, just being a guy who's a pest on ball as well in isolation, a guy that can also facilitate while Jalen Brunson's out there with him to alleviate Brunson from being that sole initiator. So... From what you've seen from Dante, right, even in his stop in Golden State, like he was running that second unit. Of right. course, it wasn't great win in the playoffs, but you're starting to see what just one year in Golden State does, playing for a phenomenal organization. And just look at how it's just transpired for him for this season for the New York Knicks. It's just been phenomenal. I mean, yeah. the uptick, man, especially with Julius Randle going down, has just been it's been eye opening. I think not only for us fans, but also for Tom Thibodeau, because it's a guy that he can rely on too. When the whole conversation about who should be starting Quentin Grimes or Dante DiVincenzo, the good thing about Dante is that he wasn't scared to take those threes, right? He yeah. just let it rip. And it wasn't necessarily that he was hitting all those shots. It was like, okay, he's just playing within the, the rhythm of the game and he's just allowing, you know, Randall and Brunson to get those open lanes because you have to honor Dante for his good shooting. But now without Randall, he's just taking his game to another level. I mean, CP, he's averaging 14 and a half points on this season, the highest he has done in his entire career. Yeah. He's shooting once again, close to 40% from downtown on higher volume than he did in Golden State. You know, he was averaging close to 40, he shot 39.7% from three on yeah. 5.3 attempts per game. It's 8.2 this season, CP. Yeah. Yeah. And he's doing essentially the same thing. All right. And he's doing that in the same amount of minutes as well. So True. Dante has just helped the Knicks, especially because this is a team that's needed three-point shooting. He gives that and then some. So it's been awesome to have Dante on this team. 